Well, I'm Jane Elliott, and I'm one of the painting instructors here at the Virginia Museum Studio School. And I wanted to give you a peek of the show that no one saw. I wanted to first just talk about a few pieces in depth and then give you a, a, a view of the whole exhibition. So first I wanted to look at Elizabeth Coffey's painting. She uses um, unconventional materials and the, her process is very important to her. Starting with um, finding vintage um, lace curtains. So I'm going to read a little bit of her statement. This series of lace paintings is inspired by the ideals of feminine beauty the traditional arts of sewing and handwork, and the element of chance that is inherent in working with unconventional materials. So first she finds the vintage curtains, and then she gessoes the lace material and attaches that to a canvas and paints the portrait using a photographic reference. And then um, after that's dry, she'll remove it from the canvas and try out inserting different colors of um, colored paper, poster board, whatever, trying to find a combination that gives, um, just gives an interesting look. And sometimes there's that feeling of a tattoo, you know, afterwards if there's a whole lot of contrast with the, the color that she's picked. Um, but there, there's always that surprise element in her work with you know, that ending piece. So now I'd like to talk in depth about B. Milner's piece. And actually, this piece was not the um, original painting that he had in this show. That painting is now in a group show up in Maine. This painting will go and be in a different group show in Maine at the end of May. Um, and I'd like to read a little bit from his artist statement. He's a realist painter and a sculptor who became an exhibiting artist near the end of a successful career in business. He's inspired by the play of light, shadow, and reflection. He works with interiors as well as landscapes, waterscapes, and cityscapes. He enjoys the challenge of painting nocturnes, depicting his subjects in the dark of night, illuminated by street lights, as well as dawn and dusk with glowing skies. He likes to convey a certain grittiness in his paintings and favors character over beauty in his architectural subjects. He's been influenced by the work of Vermeer, Hopper, and Wyeth, and by the photorealists Richard Estes, Davis Cohn, and Alan Magee. And um, B is also going to be having a solo show of his paintings in Maine in September. So good luck to B. Um, also on this, on this wall, I would like to look at Danny Robinson's painting. Um, Danny has been doing a lot of portrait work and he's done portraits of colleagues, friends. Um, he's done some beautiful paintings of his mother from vintage photographs. And then um, more recently, he's done some um, paintings of musicians. And this one was very challenging just with work getting the color palette um, lively with all the dark tones, with the contrast of light. I think he did an excellent job. And then next to that is one of Elizabeth Lamp's paintings. And she kind of comes upon her images that she works with just on walks. And um, with this one, it was just being surprised by a gorgeous sunset and then deciding to capture that in a, a very painterly way with including a lot of the visual information. And then I'd also like to talk about Martha Prudeau's painting. Martha has been a part of the studio school for about 28 years, starting with pottery, then going to drawing, painting, collage, and then back to painting again. And um, her work's really evolved. When I first had her in painting classes, she was do, um, dressing up her dogs, her Boykin Spaniels, in um, dresses and then putting them in little scenarios which would involve uh, wallpaper or sometimes they would illustrate nursery, nursery rhymes. She'd take a picture and then use that to paint from. And 
She took a collage class here, and that collage class challenged her to think more abstractly and um, more about shape, about form. And then after that class, she began incorporating cold wax into her pieces. So now she is working a whole lot with the cold wax medium and um, geometric abstraction as well as landscape. And Martha is also um, going to be teaching workshops here at the museum with the cold wax medium. So now I'd like to continue and just show you the rest of the exhibition from my um, three painting studio classes and um, identify the painter with each painting. This is Jen Diving, Paula Smith, Liz Sullivan, Elizabeth Patterson, Harriet Foster, and Jim Proctor. And this painting is Sally Grant's. And Sally has been a longtime student, and her work has progressed from um, working from um, printed references to a more immediate approach to her painting with work in plein air and observational painting. And with that, she feels that she is really um, you know, freed up and become much more fluid with her approach. And rather than thinking things out so much, it's just a more immediate response, which she's really enjoying. This one, we have a variety of work. This is um, Helena Edwards, and this is actually an illustration for a children's book that she's working on. And Carolee Owens, Yoko Gashi, Temple Avery, Gary Henley, and Gary likes to sometimes repurpose old paintings and work on top of them and make use of all that texture and wonderful energetic history. Kathy Moore, and Anu Shava. Work of Hendry Jones. And a lot of the painters that are featured in this um, grouping tend to work in a series where, um, which is a wonderful way to work because instead of just doing one painting on a subject, you can explore um, an idea over a number of canvases. You know, maybe there's a continuum of scale, subject matter, or um, paint handling. And that painting is AJ's, I can't pronounce your name. And Teresa Dawson did that diptych. Susan Little, Annette Norman, Jane Perkins, who gets the award for taking the most classes <laughs> at one time at the studio school, Cheryl Dillard, and Amanda Wallace. Here's another grouping, and we've got two um, urban nocturnes in this grouping. This one's Susie Solstice, and it's Richmond. And then um, Mac Pollitt, Pollock, Susan Smith, and Rick Pierman in Paris. Um, Alex Cecil. Lori Pearson, who was actually a medical illustrator for many, many years and um, is oh, now in the classes and with this one, he, he um, worked with the challenge of a limited palette. Heather Harvey. Bill Ross. Trace Carson. Rich Marino. Sarah Jo Williams. Renee Gleason and Anne Woolley. And this is a painting by Nina Estrada, Cecile Myers, Irina Seri. This is Lucy Mead's painting. And Diane. That's a wrap for um, looking at the show that no one saw. And I can't wait to class start back again here at the studio school um, and we'll be letting you know